What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Vikings. We're here with Season 3, Episode 3 again today, and let's just jump right into it. Well, last episode, we got to see the conclusion of the battle. Don't know what's going to happen to Burgred or whatever his name is, um, Quintrit's um, brother. Um, they went after him. And it looks like it looks like Aetherwolf is up to something. Also looks like King Egbert is up to something. I don't know what yet, but we can always speculate, <laughs> right? I think he has a grand plan for something. Uh, I don't know what it is. Is he going to stab King El in the back and decide not to take out Mercia? What's going What's going to happen here? Is um is Ragnar? going to side with Quintrit over King Egbert to, you know what I'm saying? Now that he knows her story, you know why, you know what I mean? So I don't know how this is going to turn out for this season, but it's, it's juicy. It's juicy. It's a juicy season so far. So when, um, I guess, I, I don't know what to think. <laughs> I really don't know what to think at this moment because there's no clear objective to what's really going on. There's this situation that's happening back at Catacat, right? There's this situation that's that's happening back there. Um with this wanderer wandering. The last episode was called The Wanderer. This dude that just wandered into the place. I think it's the same guy that they've been dreaming about. Um What's her name? Oslog, um, Siggy, and um, Floki. <laughs> Floki's wife, man. What's her name again? I, oh, my God. I'm drawing blanks right now. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, today is not the day to mess with me, okay? Not today. <laughs> All right. So... Thank you guys so much for tuning in as always, man. Let's go watch this episode. Remember to hit that like button. Hopefully you enjoy this reaction and we'll come back here and talk later. All right. I'll see you there. All right. So here we are. Vikings season three, episode three. Good stuff in that episode, man. Um, When it comes on to, 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 what took place on the battlefield, you know, Thorstein, RIP. Ah, it's just some stuff that, you know, you want to disagree with, but you can't really disagree with it because it's just strange. It, it's just, it's strange how it happens. Well, we finally, you know, King Eckberg got the cookies, you know what I'm saying? Um... I wonder if, based on what he sees now and sees their customs, if he's going to make a decision not to, you know, not to really give them land or anything like that. Or they're going to now start to, to unravel their official plan or whatever the situation is or what they're planning to do. Because, I mean, I, I think it's a little bit too much too much when it comes on to the blood and and you know the way how they do their sacrifices and the way how they do things is like it includes way too much blood man <laughs> you know what i'm saying and i'm I, it's not like not i'm not a fan or i'm afraid of blood or anything like that it's just it, it gets to be a little bit too much when it comes on to religious stuff and blood it's just it's too much <laughs> you know what i'm saying it's just it's too much you know and it's like and it comes with pretty much every religion when it comes on to you know speaking of blood or doing things with blood and and stuff like that because you know most of you know them believe that life is a um, not blood is a life source right so um so they do these things right so i don't know what's going to happen on there and um i think what's her name i can't remember her name right now but whatever the the lady Aethel Aethelwolf's wife she looks like she has some really strong feelings toward Athelstan. 
I don't know what's going to happen. I think they, they probably go into court each other or, or something of the sort. Um, as I said before, my last review, I said, I'm not a fan of arranged marriages because most of the time they don't work out. A lot of people might come in and say, oh, we've been together 50 years and it was an arranged marriage. How many arranged marriage you know of that actually work out in the end? You know what I'm saying? Like, whether it be in a country where this happens all the time or whether it be in a country that it doesn't happen all the time. It never really works. It never works out. It's always, unless the two parties have, they want to stay married for, you know, business purposes or whatever the situation is, but they're sleeping with other people. Like, you know, having an open relationship, but they don't want anybody to know, right? Which... Is something that a lot of politicians do but this is not this is not about politics this is about her seeing having interest in Atherton I think she's gonna end up falling in love with Atherton that's just me I think she's gonna end up falling in love with him um, and it's not just gonna be oh I just find him interesting I think she's gonna end up falling in love with him because everything in her being is telling her this is that dude right so and I think it's not just infatuation. I mean, you know, whether she was, I don't think she was happy in her marriage. And I'm just assuming that because we don't have an insight into her marriage with Aether Wolf. But I think Aether Wolf is happy because, you know, it's a woman. It's a beautiful woman. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't know. He, you know, he's a prince. So... I don't know if he cares that much, but at the end of the day, what's it to talk about? Anyways, let's talk about Ragnar and Bjorn. Battle took place. They got burgered or whatever his situation is, but I want, I am going to go back and look at it, but you guys can answer me. If you watch this review, you can put it in the comment section if you like, uh, but I want to know, um, the scene where she was explaining what happened to Ragnar. Didn't she say her uncle and her brother molested her? Didn't she say that? Is she said, you know, the last time her brother joined was it another brother? Or I'm not remembering correctly. Um, but I am going to go back and look at that scene because maybe I don't remember exactly what she said. Because um, I'm wondering why. Because I thought she wanted... To get her brother so she could kill her, kill him herself, but that's not the case. It's more of like, um, she wants to save her little brother. So, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You guys can correct me on that if possible, but yeah. So, Ragnar is pretty pissed off at Bjorn. And as I said during the episode, it was well deserved. He deserved it. Because I think he could have been a little bit more persistent towards her. To get her to understand, you're pregnant with my child. Why are you on the battlefield? You know what I'm saying? And I think, you know, he was in a dilemma. And that's why I'm not 100% coming down on him. Because he was in a dilemma, you know. Because if he went to Ragnar about the situation, he knows that Ragnar probably going to shut that shit down immediately. Right? You know, and then... Him, he would have come out of that situation kind of looking like a bitch. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, you're protecting your child. She won't listen to you. You know what I'm saying? And Ragnar is king. So if Ragnar says to her, listen, you're not getting on the battlefield today. You're carrying my grandchild. No, this ain't happening. You know what I'm saying? So that's the aspect that I'm looking at and saying that he deserved that. But I'm glad, as I said before... I'm glad that he has that balance between his uncle and his dad because two of them kind of play in that father figure for him. And one is rough, one is soft. That's good. It's good to have that balance regard regardless of if, you, you know, you don't have a mom that's present and stuff like that. It's always good to have that balance because, you know, he, on, he, he knows that his dad loves him. But he, in that moment... Ragnar was very disappointed in him because he should have he sh listen if it was me I would have I would have straight up I would have straight up told her you get on the battlefield we're done period 
we're done. Because I can't be on the battlefield trying to protect you, right? And it's not just, the, the fact of the matter is, you want to do this while you're pregnant. It's not like, you know what I'm saying? Because this whole thing about, I always, if it's because I'm a woman and this and that. No, it's not because of that. I said, I'm all for, for y'all being on the battlefield while, you know what I'm saying? You're not carrying a child. You are carrying a child. You are not supposed to be on the battlefield, period. You're carrying a child. Furthermore, you're carrying um, the leader's grandchild and you're carrying basically the prince's child. You do not need to be on the battlefield. I don't know what you're trying to prove, but if this, if you keep persisting on being there and proving this, you have already proven yourself. She got through one battle, the first battle, right? When they, when they killed the uncle, she doesn't need to be there anymore. You proved yourself. We know you can fight. We know Prune can fight. She does not need to be on the battlefield anymore. Go sit your butt down. Wait until everybody's ready to go home. Enjoy yourself. You know what I'm saying? Sit down. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and, and now she's hurt and now he's worried. And I get it, man. And I'm glad that, you know, as I said, I'm glad that, you know, Rolo came in and, you know, kind of let him know what to do. And to not worry and stuff like that. So that was cool, man. That was cool. But um, yeah, man. So the confusion that's happening back home, you know what I'm saying? I gotta go back and look at some of those prophecies because this is confusing. And you know what I was saying about um the guy being Mimir, like he he reminds me of that character. He does remind me of R Mimir telling these crazy ass stories. You know, as if he sees everything. You know what I'm saying? And he travels and he's all over the place. The the the, the drinking part too is a part of Mimir's character. Um, so there's a lot of things that he reminds me of when it comes on to Mimir. That's why I'm wondering if he is Mimir, you know. So if he is, don't let me know. <laughs> okay. Don't let me know. Let it be a surprise for me when it when they reveal it or when he reveals it. Um, so if it is, don't let me know. I'm not asking so you can tell me, okay? If it is, if it's not, then it's fine. It's okay too, you know, um, whatever it is. But the seer knows something and he's not saying anything, I believe. So um, definitely very interesting stuff that he could just tell Ivar to go to um to ease his pain he takes the pain then he tells him to go to sleep so they're believing he's he's got some sort of magic then the two boys that they captured out way out into the into the sea drowned and whatever like that's crazy that's crazy I don't know what's going on back home man what's crazy stuff going on back home anyways man thank you guys for tuning in as always you already know what it is love you guys Love you guys. Love you guys. Thank you guys for checking out the content. If you check out the review, man, make sure you hit that like button if you have not done so already. Also, leave a comment in the comment section. And yes, subscribe if you're new. Of course, always subscribe if you're new. Anyways, thank you guys for tuning in. It's your boy Terabyte Reacts. And I will see you guys for the next episode. Peace.